Okay, so in this video, I am going to show you how to do a smart art uh, family tree or like a, if you want to illustrate your DNA matches, and we're going to actually use that as the example. So my version of Word is a little older, so I apologize if this does not look like your 365 version, but in most cases, everything will be pretty much the same. It just look a little different. So to, to do a smart art, you will come up here to insert and then you will choose smart art. And then you get this uh, dialog box where you can choose the type that you want. So if you come over here to hierarchy and I like to use this labeled hierarchy. So you just click on that and hit OK. And if you come over here to text pane, you will get this little pop-up, which is pretty nice. So I'm going to actually get rid of all of these. And then I am going to, I'm not going to put a name, so I'm just going to do most uh, recent common ancestral couple and hit enter. And then I want to tab. You'll see that that bullet moved over and then a box dropped down underneath. So I'm going to do child number one and hit enter. And now I can do another child and another child. And I hit the wrong button. So I'm going to back up and delete that and it goes back. I like to hit the tab button quite frequently, um, but I want to hit enter and then we'll add another child here okay so let's say I want to go back to child number one and add some of his children or her children I am going to hit that enter and it's going to put that box to the right of child one well I don't want it there so I'm going to hit tab and now it indents that bullet again, and it gives you a box underneath. So I'm going to type in grandchild number one. And you'll see as I start typing, um, it's auto sizing this um, chart over here, which is helpful. So I'm going to hit enter and then do grandchild number two. And I'm done with child number one, so I want to come over to child number two. Now, I'm going to change the color of child number two because I want each of these children to have their individual colors. So I'm going to click on this box, and then I am going to right-click, and it's a shift-click for a Mac, and then format shape, and then I'm going to make sure you're on the fill, and I'm going to choose this red one. And then when I hit enter, it's going to give me another red box. I'm going to hit tab so that it goes underneath. And I'm going to add a grandchild there. And then for child three, I want to format this color to another color. So again, right click or shift click and then choose, we'll just choose this orange color. And then I'm going to come back over here to the text box thingy and I am going to hit enter and tab and do grandchild number four. And then I want to do child number four and we're going to make that person. Uh, let's go with this teal blue. And just for kicks, I'm going to actually change the most common most recent common ancestral couple box to, let's say, green. Okay, and then I'm going to go back to child number four, come over here, and hit enter, and add grandchild number five. Okay. So then I want to come over here to grandchild number one because I want to add my DNA match. So I'm going to hit enter tab to drop it down and DNA match number one and for grandchild number two I'm going to do the same thing two and then grandchild number three we're going to put in DNA match number three 
Okay, so I'm going to hit enter here, and then I want to actually add a great grandchild because the match that I have is actually going to go under this person. So I'm going to hit that and tab over, and now I have this DNA match number four. So in this case, this grandchild, we had a DNA match that was a child of this grandchild, and then we had a DNA match that was a, chi a child of this child of this grandchild. I hope that made sense. Okay, so I'm going to go back to, let's see, grandchild number four, and enter tab, DNA match number five. And then this grandchild number five, enter and tab, DNA match oops, number six, and DNA match number seven. So this is just one kind of quick way. And um, but you'll notice too that you know th these kind of get a little smaller because we're adding more and it will auto size. So you can do a couple different things. You can actually make it just a little bigger because you can see up here where my margins are. So I kind of made it bigger that way. The alternative is um, if you have a if you keep having a, a wider chart, um, you can go to your page layout and change the orientation to landscape, and then you can make this even bigger. So you can do it this way, and there you go. So that's just one quick way to make these nice little charts. They're really good for DNA matches. And I will tell you that I actually got this tip from Paul Woodbury uh, during um, the SLIG practicum a couple years ago. He actually introduced me to SmartArt. I had never used it before, and I use it quite frequently these days. So I hope you found this a little demo um, helpful and that you'll be able to use SmartArt. The one other thing I will point out before I uh, sign off here is that you can also do SmartArt in PowerPoint. Um, so you can do it in there as well. And uh, you can then save your file and then you could uh, turn it into a PDF if you want to share it with someone who maybe doesn't have Word or if you're doing it in PowerPoint. Um, you can do it that way as well. So I uh, hope you found this helpful and I'll see you next time.